Let's talk about deployment environment, why do we need version control systems and continuous delivery, and how Docker and Kubernetes will help us with that. So, deployment environments. And you usually will be working with the three environments. Your local environment, staging, and production environment. And let's start with the minimal setup that you need to run the service and then see why do we need staging and production. And you can run service only with your laptop. You will write some code and you will run it on your machine. And you will expose it to the internet and everyone will be able to access it. But in this case, your laptop became a single point of failure because if something happens with it or you lose access to it, then your service will be gone. And so the first step is to put your code base somewhere else. We could do even better and not only keep our code, but keep every version of our code. And for that, we will need to introduce version control system, which allows you to keep all versions of your code from the beginning or even work simultaneously and independently on several features once. And you can merge your features in the end and continue developing. And it is extremely useful when it is not only you who works on the code, but other people too. And so for that, you will need a git on your computer that will allow you to easily push your changes or pull changes from others. And one more good thing that every code base that you have is have equal rights. And if something happened to any of them, you can easily use the other one to start coding again. And now let's talk about running your application on your local machine. And it's always better to use a hosting instead. And instead of running on your machine, you will use a proper server in the cloud. And for that, you could use cloud infrastructure providers like DigitalOcean or more advanced stuff for cloud computing like AWS or Google Cloud Platform. And the basic idea that there will be someone else who will be taking care of your server. And if something happens, they have another service to pull to your code on. And this is provides your 24-hour per seven access to your service. And it also will help you to scale your application if the amount of users will grow. And now we have a small problem because your local machine uh, could may have different operating system than the others environments and code that will be working on your machine uh, will not always be working on others. And so we need for that a solution which provides us exactly the same environment for our code to run. And this solution is containers. Because what happened is that now you have infrastructure, which is your laptop here, and you have operating system. And on top of that, you have your code. And so we need this part to be the same no matter what infrastructure we're using. And previously for doing this, we used a virtual machines, which is look like that. We had our infrastructure, which is your laptop or proper server, and you have operating system on top of it. And now we need some piece of software that allows us to use another operating system on top of it. And so we could uh, run our operating system and the service. And this scheme was not very efficient because we spent extra time waiting while, while our operating system will be up and then run servers on top of that. And we also spent extra memory for storing the whole operating system. And more efficient solution is containers. And here we also have infrastructure and host operating system. Uh, but now we will use something that allows us to run a containers, which usually will be a Docker. 
and we will build an image which points from what operating system we want to start and how we want to run our application and then we can use this image to run this container and uh, instead of you running your service on a local machine you will install a docker and you will build an image from your code and you will put it in the image registry which will contain image for any versions that you have and you run that image as a container on your local machine and the same applies to the uh, server instead of running directly your application you will download an image and run it as container on docker and the last step that we could improve is to add automation because the less manual work then the more time we will have and the less amount of errors you will do it will be continuous integration and continuous deployment and so usually it will be some servers here and when you put your changes into code repository this will trigger the service to take your code and build an image and put the version of your image in the image repository which is continuous integration and then automatically deploy these changes to a server which will be continuous deployment and there is also a step which calls continuous delivery and it will automatically deploy to production but usually it's not useful and deploying to production goes manually and then one more part that you want to automate is container orchestration and you probably will use kubernetes for that so it will become incredibly helpful when you have not only one service there's different versions that you need to manage, but several of them. And for each of the service, you will be able to scale up or scale down the particular version, depending on if the load for your service goes up or down. And it will also gently roll in the update of next version and make sure that it's up and running until you destroy previous one. And also it will allow you to do canary releases when you put only 10% of your users to this new version and others to previous version and slightly go up and make sure that everything works as expected. So this is it. And we will talk into details about every of the service and advantages in future videos. And focus for today will be on a local machine what exactly do you need to do to feed this production ready deployment schema you will use one more thing an id on your local development to do it with pleasure and comfort and i prefer visual studio code and you can choose anything you want and we'll start with creating an empty folder for our project and we'll start with initializing our virtual control system which is Git. And let's just write the simplest code. And the easiest way to run it is just use command go run. But this doesn't fit our schema because first we need to build our code in order to create an image, and only that we can use that image to run our application. Plus, it will be convenient to have some abstraction on top of our commands, and for that, we will use the make file. And so, the concept is pretty simple. We have a name of command, and then on the next line, we use tabs or spaces and write actual command. And what it does is just if you write uh, then it will show you this command on the help screen. And there's a special thing here. And you could place all your command names. And so when you do now make help, 
it will print the name of command and the command near it. And the same print will apply to any command. Um, for example, we could run a linter to our code. And so when we run it, we could check that so far there is no error in our code. Um, also, we could do a testing, but for that, we should write some tests. Uh, let's have a separate function that we could write and test this function. And so when we run tests, we'll see that we don't have a package yet and we should just need new models. And now everything is great. Finally, let's go to the build in our application. Uh, let's use variable names because we will need it for other commands too. And when we run our command, we will have uh, our service that's already built and one more command that will run our application locally. And when we do make up, we will see that we will get an answer. But we started our service local on local machine using local operating system and local environment. And as we remember, it's not the way to go because we need something that will be repeatable on any operating system and environment. And so instead of running locally, like we just did, we will build a container and run it inside the Docker. And in order to build a container, we need a Docker file. And we need to start from specifying what operating system should be and what else should be installed in this operating system. And since we're building Golan code, we will use from Docker Hub. And we will use something latest from Alpine that is stable and have specific versions. Which means that now that we have our operating system and Golem installed on top of it. And first we will copy everything from our directory here. And then we run like we did make build on our machine, but this make build will be running on this operating system. And in order to run this, we will need some additional libraries and we could run it. But we will run it from this separate image. And if we use this image as a builder and run from and copy only binary file from previous step. And for that, let's first define our directory when we were walking. And we copy only our binary. And so now we are ready to run our service. So in order to build Docker file, we could use a command from Docker. And after we build, we could run our application and see that we can get our answer. And basically from the perspective of continuous integration, continuous deployment, this is all we need because it's exactly what will be running here. But from the local environment, we have one more improvement, which is using Docker Compose. That will look like this. And so the main idea of using Docker Compose is when we have more than one container. And for example, when we will be adding a database, we will add it here. But for now, we don't have anything on the our service. And so instead of just manually running the build we have on our local machine, we will just run the Docker Compose up that will bring up all the services that we have here. And so now we could do a makeup and it prints our answer. So this is it for local development. And the main thing for every repository is a readme.
And so every new joiner who will look at our repository will know how to run it locally. And so the only thing is left is just push our code changes to version control system. And so this is how this setup will usually look like, except that these files will not be in the root folder, but properly structured <laughs> as Golang applications. That's it for today. Next video will be about structuring Golang applications. Meanwhile, check the description. There is a homework for this lesson. And if you have any question, write them in the comments and I'll answer or make more video explaining missing parts.